Is the housing market bubble going to burst? Is it still a good time to buy? Should you hurry up and sell? We'll talk about all of that right after this intro. Hello folks, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Here we talk about buying, selling, and investing in real estate in Southern Utah, as well as living, working, and playing right here in St. George. So if you're new around here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it so you don't miss any of our future videos. In today's video, we're going to catch you up to speed on housing market stats right here in Southern Utah for the month of August, as we just closed out the month of August. And we'll also talk about what it is like to be a buyer and a seller in today's real estate market, not just the housing market dump, but since we customarily provide you with the numbers and the numbers could be of a significant relevance to anybody that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate right now, uh, Michonne will cover some of the numbers um, for Washington County for the month of August. So we had a total of 1.25 months supply of homes on the market and the median sell price was 491,000 and the average combined days on the market that homes would sit on the market is 14 days. So it looks like we had 386 homes sold in the month of August and 465 homes went under contract. 582 active listings, active homes on the market, and 635 new homes hit the market in the month of August. So it looks like the market is still rallying and the median sale price has actually increased. Um, I saw somewhere earlier today that the national average in the month of August as a nation, um, housing prices increased by nearly 18%. So the, the sale prices continue to rise uh, and the rest of the numbers are kind of all over the place, but indicating that our inventory is increasing slightly, uh, but the supply is still nowhere near where it was. So prior to uh, the housing market rallying, uh, Southern Utah had what, about 2,500 listings? Oh yeah. And in the month of August, we had what, just? Month of August, we had 582. So 582, and 582 listings, is still a substantial increase from what we've seen over the last 90 days or so. We nearly doubled our supply. However, if you put things in perspective, that's still one fifth of our total supply that we would normally see in a healthy market right here in Southern Utah. So what does that mean to you as a buyer? What, what are you seeing right now when you, uh, when you represent a buyer and you write an offer? What, what is the dynamic of that relationship between a buyer and a seller? Well, things are definitely getting better for buyers. They're a lot better than they were even a few months ago. So a few months ago, you were having to go crazy over asking. You were having to waive contingencies. You almost had to write an offer on the home like the day it hit the market or you're just competing with multiple, multiple buyers. Now it's, it's slowed down a little. As a buyer, you are starting to enter a slightly more reasonable space. The sellers are willing to uh, meet buyers in the middle on like repair addendums and things like that. Some of the contingencies are being met and if you have to sell your home and also buy a home, like in the past, offers that were um, hinged on a contingency on the sale of the house were nearly impossible to present. The sellers just had, if they had multiple offers and half of them were cash, they were most certainly not in position to wait for anybody to sell their house and add one more moving part. So now those offers are starting to get accepted. They're, the not, sellers. they're not flying off the market in a day. And we're also noticing that a lot of builders are no longer having bidding wars. So things are still selling pretty quick. Now 14 days in the market is just two weeks. From the moment an average listing gets listed until it's under contract, less than two weeks. So that's still uh, a heavy seller's market. However, uh, the dynamic of that relationship is beginning to really change where the sellers were not willing to make any accommodations or accept anything less than asking or pretty much assume that you're going to bring them an offer over asking. Those days are beginning to fade because of several reasons. So there is uh, a decent amount of 
buyer burnout and buyer hesitancy where a lot of buyers are just starting to put their foot down and they're no longer willing to enter these crazy bidding wars, waving appraisals, bringing in cash over asking and doing all of these things that are not often not a smart financial move where you're over committing or purchasing something that maybe a bad buy but it's almost like gambling where people get in a moment they get in a frenzy and they have to win and winning becomes more important than making sure that you're making a sound financial decision now with that being said right now is still a great time to buy because the interest rates are at their historic low and if we if we look right now uh, so our current prime is as of this morning i believe it's right around 2.67%. Uh, and don't quote me on that because it's a floating number and it could change any time. Um, but let's say if you were to finance, and uh, you know we talk about this a lot, but a lot of people don't. Uh, if you're like myself with numbers and you can't visualize when somebody just tells you difference in percentages, uh, we, we decided to give you guys an idea. So the median sale price in Washington County is 491,000. So we'll just use that as the average. Um, property tax is right around 0.88%, so a little bit less than 1%. And we'll just assume that it's your primary residence, so you get an additional 45% discount. And you can do the math um, just to kind of give yourself an idea whether you should be purchasing something right now or if it's worth it to wait. So you had the calculator set up for uh, the, the 2.65. 2. 2. Mm -hmm. So what, what would the numbers look like with, uh, with the current interest rate? Like if you were to buy something right now. So if you were to buy a home with the median sale price of 491000 and say you were to put 20% down on a 30 year fixed mortgage with an interest rate of 2.65, your monthly payment with your property tax being your primary and home insurance and all taxes and fees, that comes to 1828. And if you were to wait, and this is, this is something that a lot of um, our viewers and a lot of our clients are talking about, and they're saying, you know, Nick, what if we, what if we just wait for the market to, to really crash or bubble or slow down? And in the past, like if a lot of people are comparing what's going on right now to the rally before the crash in 2008. And it's very different for a number of reasons, but typically, Historically in the US, anytime um, a housing market crashes, it happens because of affordability crisis. So if, if it's becoming tougher to borrow money and if fewer people are able to qualify for mortgages, fewer people are buying houses and you know, fewer people are that motivated to purchase something at a really high interest rate. You know, if we were talking about 1970s and 80s, people were borrowing money at 14%. And but the purchase prices were nowhere near. I mean, average yeah. home was selling for less than 120,000, and that's a national average. So right now, those averages are very skewed. But however, as a buyer, you're in a, in a much better position. So the numbers that Michon just quoted, uh, the total mortgage payment was what? Was just so 1,828, and that's at a 2.65 interest rate. So the interest rate were to increase by just one point, and if prime was at 3.65. Uh, keeping the rest of the numbers the same, uh, purchase price of 491,000, 20% down, 30 year fixed mortgage with the same property taxes of uh, $1,944 if it was the primary residence, you would be looking at $2,042 a month. So if you were to wait for the prices to come down, chances are that the mortgages would be higher as that would be the, the major driver behind uh, the interest rates uh, or behind the, the prices finally coming down is a fewer people are able to buy real estate. So if you were to wait for just a few months and say there's a potential of mortgages uh, going up, you would be spending more than $200 more per month for, for the same, the same purchase home. purchase price, yeah. So a lot of people uh, are kind of on the fence right now and they're thinking you know, whether they should wait to buy something or if right now is a good time to buy. My personal advice is if you're able to cash in on something and you know maybe pull equity out of the property that you're selling right now at the top of the market, then you're looking to either relocate to Southern Utah or if you're like here local and you're selling your home at the peak of the market and you have some equity, yes, it is challenging to buy something because prices are high, 
but given the current circumstance, you're still able to afford more home for the same amount of money when you look at it from a monthly perspective. And you know, if interest rates start to climb, are home prices gonna come down a little bit? They're gonna come down a little bit, but as we just discussed in this scenario, um, if the home prices are lower, and typically when the interest rates uh, begin to go up, and this is just a speculation, the Fed hasn't said anything about it, but when people are asking us what would what would be the biggest catalyst, what would happen, you know, what would cause for the market to collapse because things can't continue to go up indefinitely. Yeah. Typically it's an affordability issue. The reason why the market is so high right now is because there's really two reasons. One is people are starting to have some real fear about keeping cash. Um, inflation is here, it's happening. Uh, I'm not an economist, but there are several other YouTubers that talk about the economy in its current state, and the, the affordability crisis is here on pretty much anything. Anywhere you look, the same dollar is not able to afford you what it could at some yeah. point a while back. Well, and in our lifetime, we've never had this low of interest rates. Right. So um, with... Uh, with interest rates being so low right now, is definitely a great time to, to capitalize on that opportunity because if, uh, if the interest rates go up, typically even the lower prices would only benefit those that are able to hold on to some of their cash. But what may or may not happen to cash is a whole other question. Now, if you're thinking about selling your home in Southern Utah, you have a couple of things to look forward to. Majority of the buyers that are shopping right now are still highly motivated because uh, a, they're looking to take advantage of low interest rates. B, if they have a bunch of cash, they probably don't feel super comfortable keeping the cash in the stock market because it's highly volatile and there's talks about great uncertainty with whatever the future is gonna bring. So real estate still seems to be a much safer investment. So lots of qualified buyers, lots of buyers with cash or large cash down payments that are ready, able, and willing to purchase your property. So if you're thinking about listing your home, uh, Michelle and I would be happy to put together a complimentary market analysis to give you an idea on what your home should sell for in a current market. And we could also put together a seller net sheet that would break down exactly what you would net um, after successfully selling your home. And I think a lot of people are like on the fence or nervous about listing their home. And the best part about it is like you don't owe anyone anything, any commission or anything unless your home sells and you're not obligated to accept any offer unless it makes sense and works for you. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with testing the waters, putting your home on the market. I mean, we would go over everything and what you would net and any offer that comes in, you're not obligated to accept that offer. If it doesn't make sense or if it wasn't where you wanted, you can wait for a better exactly. offer. Yeah, or you're, not, you're not committed to the terms of the contract until you've reviewed it fully understood it and decided to go forward with it. Uh, we've had some sellers that wanted to test the waters, put their properties on the market, and then they decided that it wasn't a good fit because they, they were not able to make their next move happen. And that's okay, that happens, it's part of life, but um, there's no better way to, to really figure out what your property is worth and how quickly it's gonna go other than giving it a shot. And what about sellers that want to list their home on the market, but they're nervous about the domino effect about listing their home and then buying? So that's a great question, actually. Um, it seems like, as we mentioned earlier in this video, a lot of sellers that are looking to sell their home have similar fears and reservations as the buyers. Um, the market is at its high. We really don't know what the future will bring. So the sellers are willing to take some risks to make a deal happen. So if you are putting together a domino deal, meaning that you have a contingency on the sale of your home. And they're, and they're worried about where they're gonna and go. And they're worried about where you're gonna go. So uh, there are some forms that we often use to protect our sellers that are worried about ultimately, quote unquote, being homeless after they sell their property. So there's, a, there's an addendum that allows for you as a seller to disclose to the buyer that the sale will only um, go through if you have it's, another another property secured. Yeah, contingent upon you finding another home, so it protects you. Or, um, you know, there's options to do leasebacks and, and stay in your home 
Uh, maybe you're waiting for a new build to to close and you don't want to move twice so you want to stay in your home until that home closes there's there's endless options to 100 percent protect you that's that, that's a common thing too um, a lot of buyers and sellers are both motivated to put something together and have a secured deal have a transaction that had already closed and then after that the buyers may be open to allow for the seller to stay in their home so they don't have to get a temporary rental and put together a lease back agreement where even though the home is already sold the seller can stay there for a short period of time you know whether it's 30 60 90 days whatever it takes so there are definitely solutions for you as a seller if you're thinking about all the what ifs and there's a number of other scenarios that we can't possibly mention in the scope of this video so if you have any questions our contact information is in the description below this video feel free to reach out to us we would be happy to give you whatever advice and you know play through whatever scenarios uh, may be possible for your specific case if you guys are watching this video and you find this information helpful at all we would absolutely love for you to call us text us email us we would absolutely love to help you Absolutely. Our, our goal behind this channel is to provide free information, as much of it as possible, so we could educate our viewers. But at the same time, Michelle and I are both in real estate, and we couldn't receive a bigger compliment than to actually be useful to you and earn your business. So if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing, definitely do not hesitate to reach out to us. We'd be happy to answer any of your questions. If you found this video useful, please feel free to also give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe button is right down below. And of course, share this video with somebody that's thinking about buying or selling real estate right here in St. George. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you guys in the